Whoa! Just came from a long walk. Had my headphones on listening to Joe Rogan. Had a guy on there that does the did the film The Cove. And he read all about the the seed, you know, the seed being whatever, whatever. I think I'm gonna have to go back to being a vegan. Oh Lord, all the stuff that's happened. Anyway, I went to this bookstore. So here in St. Louis. And uh they they said they have two others. They have three bookstores. It's called uh Half price books, and what they do is like exchange books to get books and CDs and whatever. They have a lot of um, what do you call that? Uh, you know, things. So well, because I can't. I, it was a long walk. It's like three miles back. Three miles there. Three miles back. Mm. I mean, do something like that. You need to drink a lot of water. I didn't drink no water. Something that's I'm drinking water now. Mm. <laughs> Talk about water. The seas. Oh. He's talking about stuff like the barrier weef and all that stuff. I remember when I was in Belize, he had a good barrier weef there. So the little fishies, you know, the little colorful fishies with the, with the coral. But I think that was a long time ago, so I think all that stuff is going away. Anyway, when I get these, this is a bargain book, you know, from the Half Price Bookstore. And they have the exchange of people come in, dump their books. But I don't like to put keep these tabs on, you know, so I take them off. This book was $5.99, six something, not six. Oh, it was almost seven. I don't forget how much it cost. Something like that. Something like it was seven something. How much is the tax here? What else did I get? Maybe it got ripped off. Six dollars? Was it? Let me look at that sales receipt. Um, Bhavan Gita. I read, I, had this, I read this book a long, 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 long time ago. So I wanted to just have it in my bookshelf since then. I said a half price book. You know, it's like that. It's a, it's, a, it's a religious text. Like a lot of these folks, none of these things are religious texts. Well, it's, it's a sacred book, but it's not a sacred book. It's not like, you know, I've read that, 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 that the Holy Quran or the Bible fell through the chair and fell on the floor. The people go, ah, they go crazy, you know? Anyway, but, but because I take these long walks, like this morning, I was walking, you know, walked the dog. I was walk talking about an hour, you know what I mean? And this afternoon, I decided to go to this thing, like, you know, whatever. So that was probably how long that was. Um, there had a lot of time to think and think and think. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll tell you about my brother later. My older brother, we found him after 30 years, but we'll talk about that another time. Uh, but one of the things I was thinking about, uh, really, uh, is this whole notion, because when I walked this morning, I had Neely Fuller on, because I, I listened to Neely Fuller at least once a week with, with the compensatory concept. And, uh, you know, uh, what happens with him, it, the way I treat Neely Fuller Jr. is like, you know, like you go to church every every week, you know, you go to your preacher, you know, you hear your preacher do the sermon, and, you know, we're not the same book, you know what I mean? But he always has a different spin to it, supposed to have a different spin to it. Well, that's the way I treat Neil Fuller Jr. I listen to him all the time say the same thing, but he's not saying the same things. He's always giving some new enlightenment. And, of course, I have his book, Compensatory Concept, well, not his that took, whatever. I have a compensatory concept. I have the, uh, I have, uh, the, uh, the original version that's out in Africa Then I bought, when I first got here, I bought the, um, uh, bought the new revised edition. Then, just after today's show, I said, man, let me bite the book because I'm about to leave to back to Africa, but I, I have my budget. I see I have enough in my budget to, you know, to do this. So I went and ordered another edition of the compensatory concert, you know, the, the new revised, another one, and because I have to take one to Africa with me. And I also got the word guide. So I take the word guide and a new one to Africa with me, along with the Bible and Giver. And, uh, and, you know, certain books I'll, I'll take with me because I got it from here. Uh, but the reason why I got the new, another compensatory guy is because since my brother, uh, we just found my brother, he's, he'd be staying with my sister for a bit. I want to give him the book so he can start reading Nearly Fuller Jr. And we have some, you know, communication because as he told me, like, it's kind of strange. He had been, he had, he, he knows, he knows these YouTube thingies. You know, he sees, he means, it's kind of strange because he said something and you speak, you speak wisdom and whatever, whatever he says. A lot of times when a black man tells another black man, they speak truth to power or something like that. Like I a fraternity brother of mine sent me an email too. He says, you know, always the sage, you know, but when, that, when a black man hears that, for me, I'm going like, ah, 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 I'm just talking stuff because I've been through a lot of stuff. And I'm just, these, like I said, these recordings here, really they're supposed to be uh, just my, so long like my, my memoirs and, you know, I can extract or whatever it is. Um, but anyway, I want to get to the point. Hold on, get to the point. But listen to this nearly full June. People have a problem because they don't understand when he says that we are all prisoners of war. No, they have problems with that. You know, people are, I'm not a prisoner of war. Freeman. Like you said, the, the book is just for, it's for individuals who know that they're, they're under the system of <laughs> anglo racist white supremacy. Anyway, well, I say it doesn't matter. That's, that, that's what the book is for. It's for individuals. They're not supposed to start no movement. And and when he when he gives an answer, like, I mean, I love this 90-year-old man. 
I love this 90 year old man. You know, if if I if I can get to be 90 and have that kind of, you know, clarity, continued clarity, and and anyway, anyway like that. So I'm I, I have a solution to all you folks who under who, who, who don't believe that you're that you're a prisoner of war. And it's you are, but if you don't believe it, this is what if I if I could do anything, like remember, let me go back. Like my undergraduate degree is actually in uh, English literature and, uh, and and film studies, and uh, you know I have a lot of things in communications. But more importantly, you know, uh, through the cadet corps and all, all the things I've been through, a whole lot of stuff. You know, with the whole you know with uh, the Black Arts Movement. You know, with uh, you know the whole Hotep Brothers and the Pan African. You know, Pan African. Uh, you know, where, where, where the the First World Alliance. I mean, all you know. All the stuff. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So when I say stuff, it's not that I'm smart or anything like this. And plus, an archivist, oh, I just forget that. You know, so if if you're if you're if you're archiving and if you're having to um, to edit, you know, people doing doing speeches and stuff like that, you sort of retain stuff that. Well, you just retain stuff. Let's put it that way. So I'm not really smart. It's just that I, I well. What got me out of South Bronx, I can read between the lines when I read books. I, can, I have this ability to read between the lines. But more importantly, when people are speaking, I can read between the thoughts, you know, between the thing. Anyway, I, I know I know I'm meandering, but that means if you if you if you have cut me off and you're gone for now, that's good. I need just to talk to people that's still here. OK, I'm making it short. Here we go. If you don't believe that you're a prisoner of war, that's fine, because, you know, you get that you have to have the mental capacity. I have my latest thing like. I love to ask people, uh, black people, I'm only doing with black people, you know, who do you identify with as a character, forget the sex or anything, uh, in, the, in Black Panther? And most people say King Mark, Killmonger, or T'Challa, or, you know, I don't know, so, whatever they say like that. Very few people know people that they even say that the, the woman that sticks people, or also the, the, uh, the young girl, you know, the, the, the scientist one. But I identify with the spy, with Nakia. I've said this before, but I just wanted to say this right now. So, so how I adjust is I know I'm a prisoner of war, but what kind of prisoner of war I am? What kind of prisoner of war am I? I'm a spy. Remember, the key is the one that that, that, that gets resources and then that talks sense to, to people that, that that's in and out. You know, that's trying to lay low. You know. That, that when she when she goes to another, I've been all over the world. She goes to another country. Says, "Oh gosh, you here again, causing trouble." No, 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 it was a misunderstanding what I was saying last. Time. <laughs> I don't have it that bad, you know. But I've been a lot of places. People say, "Oh man, they want me back," you know that kind of thing. So, so I'm cool that way. Anyway, the point is what I'm trying to say is that you have to make up your mind. If you if 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 in other words, I hear what Miss Neely Fuller is saying, but I don't have to. I mean, he's you know he's right. But I, I can take his right and make it right for me. So instead of me thinking, I know I'm a prisoner of war, and it's no problem. But what kind of prisoner of war am I? I insist I'm a spy. You know, I'm, I'm the prisoner of war that's always trying to get out, testing the problem. What, what is the movie? The uh, Magnificent, not Magnificent Seven, the other one, the motor, the, 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 I'm thinking of Steve McQueen, you know, with the motorcycle, Great Escape. You know, Steve McQueen always testing to get out, you know what I mean? Gets out there. Motorcycle. I pick your character, whatever film you're in. But what I say for for Black Panther, I say I'm the Kia, okay? Because she talks sense. She saves everything. She understands. You know, she's not trying to be the, you know, to be the whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, and she she has, she hasn't been corrupted by by the CIA agent to be the agent, to do what the agent needs to want be done anyway. You know, like oh, kill them all. You know, kill all the players. No more after me. You know, I uh, certainly not this this this. Uh, Okay, let me not come down to anybody because one of the codes of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. is that basically what, what we have to embrace is you really we really got to stop talking about other, other people. Just whatever that person said is what that person said. Leave that alone because we, we have so much stuff to do. You know, we have so much stuff to do. We can actually ignore. If a sniper comes your way, do not start in the, the sniper. I mean, you know, somebody sniping your position. Don't get involved with that. But I have to answer them. No, you don't have to answer them. If we're all prisoners of war, then guess what? There's somebody in the prison complex that's just, let them answer for you. Right? You you know, stay on your thing. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. You know, because don't call nobody no names. I'm really guilty of that. You know what I mean? I mean, 
I listen to some of these cats and, and or some of these folks, and and I, and I like when they call them stuff, and, and I like terms too, like butter biscuit and all that stuff. But you know, and I, I did make up a, a term myself for all these folks that do Banneker. I call them neo Negroes. But you know, the problem is, you know, you call them somebody, and you don't call them out their name. If somebody says their name is so and so, just honor that and keep on moving. If you don't want to listen to what they say, or if they make a nonsense, you have to comment on their thing. You don't comment on their name or their thing. You comment on what they think. If you you understand. Like if somebody is hired as a shock jock, they're going to do shock jock things. So if they're doing shock jock things, then they're paid to be a shock jock. Then why are you criticizing them, criticizing them for being the shock that what they're paying for? You're not paying for them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You get what I'm getting at? I'm about trying to be subtle with all this stuff. If somebody, uh, you know, uh, lives in a palatial estate and they're, they're always flaunting their, 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 their wives and, and, and bikinis, and blues, that's what they do. Let them do that. They put their children in, 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 on the camera. Well, let, leave them alone. And they got to sustain their life, things, whatever. They, leave them alone. What are you doing? That's the whole point. <laughs> okay? I'm sorry. I, uh, let, let me try to explain. And then you have to do your own references. It's stop listening to them. Hey, look, I, I love some of these folks, but I treat them, I look at them I like, as... as as for entertainment purposes only. I don't care what they're saying because I have my own mind and then I have to filter what I have to, I have to figure out for how to keep myself going. You understand? So so all I'm saying right now is that for all you folks, that you, or you followers of Neil Fuller Jr., or you know, we on code. code now if you're already going to follow Mr. Neil, don't be mentioning his name unless you really have his books and you, you can constantly read his book. One of the things I want to do when I go back to South Africa, because I, I work with a radio station, is um, it's probably when they start broadcasting, I want to do a thing. Um, and they'll let me. Why? Because they have to. I'm a senior advisor to this radio station. Cassie to Cassie, don't worry about the station. Anyway, where I will take a, uh, open up, take a passage of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., read it, and then decipher it. You know, that's one of the things I want to do. You know, stay in that lane. I'm not going to be commenting on blah, 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 blah. I have a lot to say about a lot of things, but I have to adjust it to such a way where, you know, it makes sense to the world. My world and your world is Africa. I'll be done. Anyway, so that's it for me. T, from the Patterson's is taking the trenches to bed, letting you know what I only suspect from a reality of the ADOS. That would be the American descendants of chattel slavery, which I am, but I'm also a whole lot of other things. And so are you. And what are the things you are? You know, you don't want to be a, you're a prisoner of war. But you can be a spy or something else. Figure out what you are. You're a prisoner of war or state. All right? Take you later.